What's up, Data Pipeliners? This is Data Engineer One, and today we're going to be working on a brand new pipeline. This is just going to be an introduction project to how you can start writing data pipelines in Kedro. I was inspired because I saw from the EuroPython conference a really great code snippet uh, for accessing the Singapore API. This is the uh, temperature API that Singapore offers to tell you what dates have what temperatures. And this was from a talk by Qin Hui Ong. We're just gonna use the API from that talk, um, but I highly recommend if you get a chance, you should see her full talk on how you can use multi-threading and multi-core processing to speed up your data pipeline. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now this is gonna be a full walkthrough. So we're gonna start out by actually creating a brand new project. So after we do a pip install of Kedro, we're going to call Kedro new, and then we type in the name of the project. And in this case, the project name is gonna be SG API, the Singapore API. I like to keep my Python package names a little bit shorter than the actual project names. This makes it easier to type in your imports. Uh, and we will not be generating the example pipeline today since we're going to be writing one for ourselves. Let's go ahead and CD into that target folder. And from here, what I like to do is I like to first off use PyCharm. If you guys don't have PyCharm yet, make sure you get a copy of it. And we do have a video on how you can set up your PyCharm instance to talk with your Kedro project. There's a lot of great features that Kedro comes with that makes it easy to integrate with your PyCharm. The only thing that we're really gonna be doing in this case is just marking the source as sources root. This is the most useful part. And now we have our PyCharm project. So now what I like to do is after I've got the PyCharm project ready, I actually, I will not touch the PyCharm project until a little bit later. So what I do then is I open up our Jupyter Notebook instance. And Jupyter Notebook, of course, is everybody's favorite way to do kind of data sciencing, data processing. Uh, and this is one of my favorite ways to get started with that development process. And the reason that's the case is because it allows you to have an easier kind of like interface to get closer to the data and closer to the APIs that you're trying to use. And so here we're going to write our first API integration with our Jupyter Notebook. So let's make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to open up the Notebooks folder. Here we're going to start up a new notebook, SGAPI. Um, and if you've never used Kedro with Jupyter Notebooks, there's a lot of great features that are built in to Kedro that integrate with the Jupyter Notebooks as well. I highly recommend that you take a look at our playlist that has a lot of videos regarding integrations between Kedro and Jupyter Notebook. So in our case, here we go. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start writing that API. We're going to see if we can get a little bit of data from that API. Uh, so the URL for this guy is this one, temperature, and then you have the date. And you can put in any date here to get the date that you require. And so for us, in our cases, we're going to import the request library, and then we're going to use the request.get URL to get that date's temperature. And let's just see what the date was like in October last year. Now with requests, you always get a response object. We're going to open up that response object and see what the JSON output is like, because this API is a JSON API. So we actually get the JSON content from this API. So we go ahead and type in resp JSON, which will actually parse the content as a JSON object. And here we go, this is what it looks like. We have a bunch of metadata inside of its stations, and these are all the different timestamps and locations. And wow, there's actually quite a lot of data, so it's no wonder why the process took a little bit of time to download. This is actually quite a large bunch of data, which is actually fantastic. So let's see what we can get from this. And the next part here is I like to explore the data a little bit. I like to like get a feeling of the data to see what are we looking for, what can we do with it, and so in this case, I think what we can do is let's just take a look at only one of the stations. We'll do station ID number S109, and let's just get a temperature readout for that station over time. So it looks like there's a whole list of timestamp objects here. So we have the timestamp, and from those timestamps, we have these readings. Um, this object is then underneath another object, which is called items. So we can actually access our timestamp items 
by doing this here. Oh, and it also looks like we can get our uh, latitude and longitude for these stations. So we can actually even map these different temperature readouts onto a, a proper mapping library. Uh, that's a little bit more than we want to do in this case. We're just going to keep the pipeline very simple. Let's go ahead and grab the data out. And so here's one other trick with Jupyter Notebooks that I really like. This is Ketro unrelated. Whenever you have an output from your Jupyter Notebook, you can actually access that output directly from the cell value. So usually what happens is when you run these kinds of things, you want to save it to a variable so you can access the variable. And then people believe, oh, because I don't have a variable here, I have to rerun this code, right? So you'd have to do like output is equal to rest.json. Actually, this is a cool trick with Jupyter Notebooks. I don't know if many people know about this. You can, in fact, do that same thing by grabbing the output from the notebook's ID. So if we go right here, and this notebook run ID is actually five, if you type in underscore five, you can grab that output again. So it actually works, um, and you don't have to rerun any nodes. You can just grab the data that's already loaded in memory. So now in order to extract the data that we want, let's go ahead and prototype a function inside of our notebook cell. We're going to go through every single one of the items in the item list, and we can grab the item list, of course, by doing five items. And this was, again, the output here from the previous cell. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say for item in this list, we're going to grab the timestamp, and then we're also going to grab the readings, but not just all the, not just any of the readings, but the readings for this particular station. And the station that we want to look for is station 109. And to grab the temperature, we're going to use a list comprehension and then grab the first value from that. So we're going to grab the temperature value for every single reading if that item station ID equal to the station that we're looking for. And then we can grab the first element from that. And it looks like in some cases, this guy doesn't exist. And so we can open up our item to see what the item looks like. And it says here that that item does not exist there. Yep. So in those cases, we can say, uh, just ignore the value. So if we have an index error, we're going to pass. So this should run smoothly. And we should see the timestamp for the very end of the day right here. Yep. As well as the temperature for that, for that point in time. Great. So now what we want to do is we want to start adding these guys to a list. And now we have constructed a list of our, of our values for ourselves. And so now this output list will contain all the temperatures for that one station. OK. So now what we've done right here is we've actually done a data cleaning process. We've taken a data source from this request API, and we've created a data cleaning function in order to filter for the things that we want and then output the clean data. Hey guys, this is Future Data Engineer 1 here doing the editing, and I realized that this video is actually going to be quite long. So instead, we're going to split it up into a several part series on how we can write this pipeline, because I think it's a fantastic way for beginners to really take a look when writing their pipelines. So without further ado, if you guys made it this far, make sure that you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.